Welcome to another lively edition of The Deadly Experiment, all of you out there in TV land. Rick Adams, your host and producer for the program. And we are also seen, of course, on YouTube. Many of these programs are posted on YouTube as well. Going back uh, over the last few years, many of my radio programs are there too, the audio of. And uh, we certainly, uh, we would invite you to uh, give a look while we still have freedom and while everything is not totally taken down yet with the censors and the, and the police, the KGB that uh, peruse the internet and make sure that something that is not kosher approved uh, will be taken down. If it's not kosher approved, if it's reaching too many people and people are beginning to see through the matrix of lies, then uh, we can't afford that. This is the age of tolerance, you know, we're told tolerance for everything but fact and truth. And that's why we have Holocaust laws. That is, laws in certain countries of the world, in Austria and Europe and elsewhere, that will forbid people from investigating the so-called Holocaust theory in and of and by themselves. If truth is truth, it doesn't need a law to protect it, does it? Obviously. Someone's been lying to us. Someone's been lying for a long time. We've been believing those lies as a people, haven't we? You're right, Rick. You're right. Well, some of you are nodding out there. Others of you are shaking your heads. Oh, no, he's the liar. He's the liar. I believe everything I hear from lying Lester. I believe everything I hear from the Communist Nitwit Network. And I believe everything I hear from Fox News because they're the alternative. Are they? Well, let me tell you something. We're going to show you in the next segment today of our program on media disinformation, media propaganda, and exactly who owns the media in America today. Going back before the Internet days, I was involved in research, independent research and independent media. Books published, publications such as the American Free Press, Early the Spotlight, uh, various other groups, the Birch Log, and so on and so forth, the independent news, um, all over the country, people had to publish papers. To do what? Well, to get out the truth that the so-called media wouldn't touch or was obviously covering up. And we saw that from World War I on, how the media lied us into war, uh, how Roosevelt was able to successfully engineer the attack on Pearl Harbor. That's an established fact now, uh, opening up the uh, Pearl Harbor, uh, uh, you know, itself, uh, the whole uh, uh, presence uh, of the uh, commanders at Pearl Harbor, uh, General Short, Walter Short, and of course, Mr. Kimmel, Admiral Kimmel. So they were hold solely blamable for the attack, and yet they were deliberately not allowed to know that Washington had already decoded secret codes between Japan and the United States and also England, Mother England and uh, Mr. Churchill, who was a member of some pretty notorious corrupt uh, organizations as well. The Hellfire Club was one of them, um, sort of uh, a satanic club. And that's why he became prime minister of England. He and Roosevelt were plotting to get America into war for the sake of that empire. Well, we're going to be showing, God willing, other programs that expose the lies of World War II. But here's the point. The point is, if it were not for the corrupt media, the Walter Cronkites, the Edward R. Murrows, and people like that, uh, David Sarnoff, William S. Paley, uh, those individuals who were connected to, in some way or another, to the Central Intelligence Agency, which was formerly the Office of Strategic Services in World War II. They uh, were the ones who were, who were feeding us lies and distortions, misinformation, and this whole business of a Nazophobia, a business of a Germanophobia, and a Japanesephobia, and a day go a, phobe, a phobia, you know, to go after those terrible people in Europe and Japan who are just uh, inching for war and itching for battles and wanting to attack America just because America, like we were told on 9-11, was, uh, was a nation of freedom and a nation of liberty and they hate our freedom so much they just can't wait to enslave us. Well, the people that are enslaving us are the people that are our protectors. Our own government, as it was in the days of ancient Rome, is corrupt beyond any, any imagination. This government now, the military spending, which has gone down over the years proportionate to the, if you will, welfare state in America, 
we call it the welfare warfare state now. That's the ancient Rome complex. Well, it has gone down, the military spending, somewhat. But in actuality, it's gone up. That is, the percentage has gone down. But who is it that we are defending? We have a $4.2 trillion federal budget, and yet only $3.6 trillion is actually raised in revenue. So that, what does that mean? That means the gap between what we take in and what we spend has to be what? Monetized. And how is that monetized? Through the private-owned Federal Reserve banking conglomeration of the synagogue of Satan. That's what you don't touch. Congressman Henry Gonzalez was chairman of the banking committee in the House for years. Three attempts were made on his life when he sought to audit the Fed. He got the message. He stopped auditing the Fed. Congressman Fernand St. Germain from Rhode Island was on that committee. He was wise enough to know on a talk show locally when I pinned him down that he said, you're right, but I can't, I can't talk about it. I can't do anything about it. I'm just a congressman, just a congressman, just a senator. Who really runs America? Not the United States Congress, not Mr. Trumpet in the White House, the sixth Trump of revelation who is following the requests of his bosses in Jerusalem to legalize this whole idea of an occupied zone of Jerusalem, east and west, for the sake of the so-called Jewish people. Jesus calls that an abomination. The prophet Zechariah in 12, chapter 12, verse 3, he says, I will make Jerusalem, meaning God, a stumbling block to all the nations of the world. A curse, he says, I will make Jerusalem. Isn't it a curse now? Aren't we fighting over that? Aren't people dying daily because of American imperialism in the Middle East on behalf of Israel? They sure are. God's behind it all. He installs our leaders. He's making us what we deserve. We don't go to the voting booth and vote, my friends. We simply pull a lever or check a mark or what have you in the voting booth, and that's all. Who counts the votes is more important than who votes. How they're counted and where is another matter in itself. Fact of the matter is, you don't elect your leaders. God has appointed them over you to be a curse. Gino Raimondo is one curse. David Ortiz, Brett Smiley, all of these people, friends, are installed because God is judging America. And he's judging Rhode Island because Rhode Island has turned its back on Roger Williams. It's become a cesspool of filth and garbage, and we're reaping it in our streets. We're reaping it in every community now, and we don't feel safe or free anymore. And God says it's going to get much worse before the end. Who's in control of the mind is in control of the world through the media and the money and the political establishment. Right now, part two of that program we began last week on the media corruption. Give a listen. The year is 1917 and Representative Oscar Calloway enters a disturbing statement into the U.S. congressional record. The statement reveals why J.P. Morgan interests hired 12 high-ranking news managers. The 12 were asked to determine the most influential newspapers in America. They were to figure out how many news organizations it would take to control generally the policy of the daily press of the United States. The 12 found it was only necessary to purchase the control of 25 of the greatest papers. An agreement was reached. The policy of the papers was bought and an editor was placed at each paper to ensure that all published information was in keeping with the new policy. Soon, that policy would be defined by a front group formed by J.P. Morgan and his colleagues. In fact, Morgan's personal attorney was founding president of the organization, the Council on Foreign Relations. Today the CFR maintains that its goal is to increase America's understanding of the world. However, the actual objective of this highly exclusive club is revealed by the rare admissions of the insiders themselves. 
early 60s, a Georgetown University professor collects information for a book favorable to the network of powerful men who founded the CFR. For two years, Professor Carol Quigley is allowed to examine the confidential papers and secret records of this network. Quigley reveals that these men aim to create a world system of financial control in private hands, able to dominate the political system of each country and the economy of the world as a whole. In short, they seek total and quiet control of the entire world and the CFR is their most visible conduit for carrying out that agenda. CFR members include America's wealthiest tycoons as well as the highly placed elite in government, academic institutions, tax-exempt foundations, and the establishment media. Ruling Class Journalists, written by Richard Harwood, describes the CFR membership as the ruling establishment in the United States. The Washington Post article boasted that news reporters who are CFR members do not merely analyze and interpret foreign policy for the United States, they help make it. Who are these policymakers? Many of their faces are familiar. NBC's Tom Brokaw, CBS's Dan Rather, ABC's Barbara Walters, Jim Lehrer of PBS, William F. Buckley of National Review, media mogul Rupert Murdoch, owner of the giant multifaceted News Corporation. These media heavyweights, and many others like them, are members of the CFR. Powerful corporations are also invited to become members. At the close of the 20th century, CFR influence presided over far-reaching consolidations of media control. In 1995, CFR members Michael Eisner of Disney and ABC's Thomas Murphy merged their media empires. Soon after the merger, the Disney-ABC empire becomes a CFR corporate member. In the year 2000, the world's largest internet service provider, America Online, joins forces with Time Warner, one of the world's largest news organizations. The CEOs favoring the move are CNN's Thomas Johnson and Time Warner's Gerald Levin, both CFR members. Once again, another media giant is created under the shadow of CFR influence. Today, an elite handful of individuals define the agendas that are supported by the empire of establishment news. In 1990, an age-old conflict in the Balkans erupted into civil war. A multi-sided and complicated overseas struggle was packaged by the mainstream media as a tidy melodrama. The predominantly Christian Serbs were cast as the villains. A key maneuver employed to demonize them involved a photo shoot. The news has always been used to stampede our reason with a, a perception and emotion. When you're talking about war, you get those heart-tugging appeals to pity in particular, and we've seen that again using images. Benjamin Works, president of the Strategic Issues Research Institute, is a military affairs analyst for Fox News and CNN. He recalls the emergency shelters set up by the Serbs to accommodate Bosnian refugees. I remember very vividly seeing tours by the camp commander showing the mess hall, showing food that, you know, I wouldn't pay money for, but I'd eat, gladly eat if it were free. And yet this was turned into a sensational story about a concentration camps. And the propaganda twist on that came out of both the electronic media and the newspapers and very glaring covers on Time magazine and such. Judgment. An independent expose reveals how a British film crew photographed a Bosnian emergency shelter to look like a Nazi concentration camp. The film crew positioned themselves inside a barbed wire enclosure to shoot out at refugees who were free to come and go as they pleased. The camera zeroed in on a refugee whose emaciated appearance was the result of a birth defect. And we found that all of these uh, allegations of a concentration camp were, were really frauds perpetrated by the reporters. And in fact, at least one, Roy Gutman, won a Pulitzer Prize for this kind of fabrication. 
and the image that helped motivate American involvement in an overseas entanglement was a total fake. One of the CFR's strongest media allies is the New York Times. As a major outlet for the establishment viewpoint, the Times has achieved dominant influence over the reporting of national and international news. The Times is relied upon by many editors in the mainstream news media for direction on how to portray world events. In addition, the Times Wire Service retails the establishment line to subsidiary outlets such as broadcast news distributors and regional newspapers. Competition between these outlets rests primarily on the style of regurgitating the same message. At a 1991 closed-door meeting of fellow internationalists, billionaire and former CFR chairman David Rockefeller praised his media allies, but his confidence that his words would not leave the room was later broken. We are grateful to the Washington Post, the New York Times, Time Magazine, and other publications whose directors have attended our meetings and respected their promises of discretion for almost 40 years. It would have been impossible for us to develop our plan for the world if we had been subject to the bright lights of publicity. But the world is now more sophisticated and prepared to march toward a world government. With literally millions of events occurring around the world every day, the media simply can't report on all of them. But like the Times slogan, all the news that's fit to print, the mainstream media implies that they can be depended on to report what is significant. What isn't made clear is exactly who or what dictates which events are newsworthy and which are not. If it bleeds, it leads. This cynical saying, often regarding mainstream news, implies that violent or catastrophic reports are peddled as top stories. Rising water and the two planes collide. Horrific or dramatic events alone create strong emotional responses. Add to that sweeping statements that stir public fear. The police can't stop it. Reports of war, nuclear threats, natural disasters, scandals, and murders often fill the daily news for reasons other than to inform. Preying upon fears viewers have concerning death and destruction is so frequently practiced by major news that most viewers are desensitized to the actual intent of the reports themselves. Good evening. There are new and dire predictions tonight about the future of our planet. Around the world, glaciers are in full retreat. Some, like the ancient ice cap on Mount Kilimanjaro in Africa, could be gone in a decade or two. It's a dramatic symptom of the warming of the Earth, detailed in a new thousand-page United Nations report climate change 2001 it predicts the new century will bring and i quote large scale and possibly irreversible changes affecting every last person on earth today's population has already set off an environmental spiral depleting the world's forest and contributing to overfishing and overgrazing soil is being eroded which in turn is hurting crop production leading to starvation this is punishment, say scientists, for sins of the past, the end result of years of pollution, wildfires year-round in California. That 500-year flood that devastated Grand Forks, North Dakota, occurring every five years. Greenhouse gases that stay in the atmosphere a hundred years after they're released. It is a doomsday scenario detailed in a report sponsored by the United Nations. Sweltering summers, rising sea levels, more droughts, more violent storms. Global warming is real, the new report declares, and humans are helping to cause it. By creating a, a, a crisis or a perception of crisis, you accomplish several things. First of all, people in a, in a crisis do not think rationally. People in a crisis uh, look around and, and say, geez, we have to do something. Uh, something is, is upon us. And so in a, in a panic atmosphere, crisis atmosphere, people are willing to uh, accept more stringent controls. No matter 
And we're back now with uh, the postscript of that program on just who owns the media today. And as I said before on the previous show, um, it's a little bit dated, just a few years old, but it's all up to date anyway. It doesn't matter because the names have changed, but the guilty are still guilty of what? Of lying to you. Lying not just by fabricating and by uh, omissions of facts and distortions, but simply by not telling you the truth. That's the biggest lie of all. You know, one man who was a communist spy who defected and retired from communist circles years ago was in Rhode Island. His name was Boudens, Louis Boudens. And he spoke to a minister locally and he said in his, um, in his years past, he reflected on what communism does and how communism kills. Over 166 million people, Christians, Muslims, others killed in World War I and II in that era and beyond World War II. Well, he said, you know, the communists will tell you a lot of truth. Really? Yeah, they'll give you truth, they'll give you more truth, they'll give you even more truth, almost all the truth, until they give you the lie in the end. And that's the clincher. There's a little bit of arsenic, just a little bit of cyanide, and that's the killer. So they lie by giving you the truth, but not all the truth. Jesus Christ and his word here is the truth. He is the life and the truth. No man can come to the Father but by him, says the word of God. We have time running out, friends. The 70th year is here since 1948. The gathering of the evil fig tree in Jerusalem in 1948. That's what God calls it. Jesus spoke to his enemies, the scribes and the Pharisees. These were the Kenites, those who called themselves Judah and are not, but do lie sitting in the seat of the scornful. And in Matthew 23, Jesus pronounces all the curses to them, the woes and the curses. And he told them, you say ye are of God. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. That means play actors, those who claim to be of Judah and are not. For, he said, ye compass the sea and the land to make one proselyte, and yet when he is made, ye make him to old more the child of hell than yourselves. You curse them, and I'm cursing you, Jesus said. Woe unto you, blind guides, those of you who say ye are the light. We would not have buried the prophets if we were living in their times. Jesus said, ye are of that generation, meaning that progeny, that seed line that did kill the prophets, that murdered the prophets, that murdered and will murder me, and murdered many of our apostles. Stephen for one stoned to death, you know, in Revelation. The book of Revelation, chapter 17, he says, in her, that seed line, not Rome or the Catholic Church, but in that seed line of Cain, he says, was found the blood of all those shed on the earth. How? In war, in murder, in terror, in starvation. Who are the real terrorists, friends? Who killed Jesus Christ? Was it the Muslims? No. Was it the Arabs? No. Was it the Nazis? No. <laughs> Forget about the paraphernalia and all of the hysteria. Let's get real here. The scriptures are either true or they're false. There's no middle ground. Either you believe God or you don't. You believe the Walter Cronkites of the world, the Tom Brokejaws of the world, the Lying Lesters of the world, the Anderson Poopers of the world, and all of the, what's the other one? Tapper, Tapioca, or whatever his name. These men and women are frauds. They are liars. They sold their soul to the devil long ago for this for money. Now, if you want to do the same, and you're listening to me right now, and there are broadcasters in this area who watch this program, many of them, and you want to continue to sell your soul to the devil, you go right ahead. It's not for me to interfere. I'm not going to try to influence you. I'm just telling you that at the end of that road, there is one big, huge wall, and it's a stone brick wall, and you're going to go crashing into it and be cut down to pieces. Maybe there's somebody out there today in that land who's being influenced, whose conscience is being pricked, that how corrupt they are by being a part of the media for a paycheck in order that they may feed their families and pay their debts, their mortgages. Again, mortgage means death grip. Why? Because they're trying to impress people with what they own. But they don't own a thing. 
America is a debt-ridden nation today. Rhode Island is now billions and billions of dollars in budgetary expenditures, 9.4 or 5 billion, and counting. And offshore, if you will, <laughs> offshore, off the books in debt is much higher than you think. Just Providence alone cannot pay its pensions. Michigan bankrupt, Puerto Rico bankrupt, all of these states, California, totally, completely ready to collapse. And also, we have the signs on the earth of the natural disasters to come. That's right, we have lava flowing from volcanic activity everywhere. We have Mount Rainier, could go off at any time in Washington State. Mount St. Helens, which is a very biblical and important point in scripture to relate to our times today. Friends, these are signs on the earth, signs in the heavens, the blue moon, the red moon, the super moon. These events are not by accident. And they're not from this myth of global warming. No, they're from God's Word in the book of Revelation, chapter 12. He's telling us the signs are here. Now, you pay attention. You're in debt. You're in chains. Gina Rahimondo is a wicked woman. She, of course, and her coterie are destroying this state on behalf of her bosses on Wall Street. She doesn't care about you. None of them do in the legislature. If they did, they wouldn't be in the legislature. We've been there, done that. People like Mike Pinga, you know, the Tea Party revival, where did they go? They left. Most of them didn't amount to a bag of beans. Joe Pinga was his father. Joe Pinga, the baker from West Warwick who gave up on everything years ago because OSHA invaded his business. OSHA, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, and he threw them out. He said, you got a warrant? Stay out. We won't allow you here. Peter Van Dam ran for governor. And of course, he had persecution against him. Peter Van Dam tried to educate his children at home without submitting to the state, and he paid a high price. He lost his family. One of his kids got killed in a car accident, and he was attacked viciously. But he gave up and moved out of the area. He said, Rhode Island is done. Friends, it's finished. It's over. The ancient Roman Empire is collapsing all around us. You have one place to go, and that's the Word of God. Get into His Word. Get a good, a good Bible, if you can. You know, the 1611 King James Bible with annotations and a concordance to get into the Word, because now's the time to seal the mind before Satan appears in Jerusalem. Friends, we're out of time. We thank you for joining us on these programs and watch many of them posted on YouTube. And again, Rick Adams, your host and producer, thanking you for joining us and uh, saying uh, Godspeed to you all and may Yahweh bless his elect.